I will speak in English, uh, and um, but as you know, I speak French, so you can later ask questions uh, in French. <clears throat> I will introduce to you uh, <clears throat> a new concept uh, that is catch reconstructions, and uh, this concept is necessary because <clears throat> the catch uh, is uh, is contested, and we have to know about catches. Now, we can start the story here. Uh, when nature asks uh, misleading questions, does catch reflect abundance? That they had asked me to write uh, an essay about why we need catches. This was an essay about why we need catch to know the catch of fisheries. And I didn't know what it was for. And I wrote the essay about why we need catches. And then they ask this question, does catch reflect abundance? And this is not the same thing, why we need catches and does catch reflect abundance? So I could only write that catch is a, is a, is a signal of abundance. It's not, it's not abundance itself. But there is a, a justification. The catch, even if we don't know abundance, is important to know the, the size of a fishery. Uh, when we talk about a fishery, uh, an object, uh, it has a size. It can be small, it can be big, and uh, the catch is a measure, is a metric of the size of a fishery. It is also a measure of the value of a fishery. You need only to multiply the catch uh, with the, the ex vessel prices, and you know uh, how much your value, your fishery, is worth. Um, and that is important, for example, for bilateral fisheries access agreement between countries. <clears throat> the catch also tells you about how much a certain gear is deployed, and uh, thus it uh, is a measure of the impact of a gear. For example, trawler, uh, a trawler's uh, uh, on the ground is uh, going to be uh, having a big impact if. Uh, there is lots of catch by trawlers, and vice versa. And it is also a measure of criminal activities when you're talking about illegal catches. So knowing the catch is uh, useful for lots of things, in addition to its relationship to the abundance of fish. One, <clears throat> one could even argue that you don't know a fishery when you don't know its catch, because I remember John Galland, it was a scientist that influenced us very much when we were younger, because we were one, once upon a time. And uh, <clears throat> he said, uh, there are three things we must know about fisheries. The catch, the catch, and the catch. And this is where really accurate statistics come in. We, we have to know the catch. Now, people who work on a single fisheries they usually don't ask themselves this question because they have good catch data on that fishery. And there are a few problems of accuracy. The problem is the estimation of other parameters, the natural mortality and so on. But when you work on foreign countries, when you work on comparison between countries, there you need catch data from different countries. And, uh, what you do then is FAO statistics. And these FAO statistics are based on data from submitted by the various countries. And it so happens that the FAO statistics are misleading. Uh, for many years, I have believed that they were roughly correct, plus minus 20%, but I was, I was wrong. They are biased downward. and. Uh, with the exception of China, which is biased upward, they are biased downward because certain fisheries are not covered by FAO. And when FAO or the countries reporting to FAO don't know about something, they put a zero. And this zero becomes a real zero later. So that leads to a, a, that leads to a, <coughs> a, a bias downward, a downward bias. The, the, the non-available becomes zero, a soft zero becomes becoming a hard zero. 
So the question is, how can we, can we correct for this? And can we know what, uh, <coughs> can we know what the countries don't seem to know? It is, it is presumptuous, is it, that we can know what the countries don't know? Well, uh, if a country is, a fishery is not known or not documented, uh, it is still the case that fishing is a social activity. Uh, it involves people working in societies, they have families, they have wives, they have uh, colleagues, and this activity requires resources from boats and fuel, and they produce a product, fish, which is sold on markets mostly. So, in a literate society, such as ours around the Med, it is not possible to run a fishery without it having a shadow on the society where we live. So we can indirectly always know there is a fishery there and it produces fish. The question is how precise, how precise is our estimate? But it is not possible to know nothing about a fishery. And the sec second thing is, the second point, is that because this, this shadow that uh, throws uh, uh, on society uh, over fishery, it, you, can, you can always infer a catch that is better than a zero. If, if, if they tell you, FAO or the countries officially tell you, we don't know anything about this fishery, therefore we put a zero, you can always from reconstruction of the activity, get a better estimate than zero. Because zero is a very precise estimate, but it's always wrong. Uh, <clears throat> it's like a watch that tells you the time of the day. To, uh, the watch doesn't work. It tells you precisely the time of the day, uh, two, times, uh, two times a day, but you don't know when. OK, <clears throat> so that, this point for the reconstruction I, I made this uh, point in '98, but uh, I can send that to people who are interested. In implementing this in uh, practice is, uh, was done uh, for the first time by, uh, by a group in a, in a paper that was based on a contract that we did for the Western Pacific uh, Management uh, Council of Hawaii. So, the Western Pacific Management Council, and they ask us to get to estimate the catch of the various U.S. flag islands in the Pacific, Hawaii, and uh, which is a state, and but the Marianas, Guam, and so on, other islands. And basically, uh, we elaborated a procedure consisting of six steps. We the first is obviously to look at FAO and national data, and then to look we look at what sectors are not in the data. Uh, for example, in the case of these uh, fisheries, uh, mostly they were uh, tuna fisheries, and the local uh, fisheries for uh, coral reef fishes were not in. Then we look for alternative sources of data. Uh, the reports by individual scientists, anthropologists, newspapers account, local experts. Then we look for so-called anchor point uh, estimates, single point estimates that may have made be made in a, in time, and we link them. And then we interpolate between the anchor points, and we combine the reported data with the this additional data. We get the total catch. So far, we have done this. That is uh, the Sea Runners project. Uh, my students research assistant, my friends, my colleagues, and about 200 uh, colleagues uh, in different parts of the world. We have done it for about 150 countries in the world uh, and uh, their territories. That is about 200 um, EEZ. <clears throat> we, we have about 50, 40, 50 to do by the end of uh, 2014, and we, we are reassessing the trends of the world. I will get to the to the med uh, in a uh, while. Well. 
Uh, <clears throat> for example, if you look at uh, the worst case scenario, uh, the Siberia, uh, Arctic Canada, and Arctic, uh, um, and Arctic Alaska, so Alaska, Arctic Canada, and Siberia, they are the catch from Alaska, the catch from Arctic Siberia, and the catch from uh, Siberia, sorry, Arctic Canada, catch from Russia. Uh, they were, uh, they replace zeros in uh, the catch statistics of a field. You can look in the catch statistic of a field, Arc region 18, area 18, that is uh, FAO area 18, has zero catches. It has Eskimos, though, that fish. So something is wrong. Uh, <clears throat> a student of mine, uh, French, from, mm, uh, who is doing a master thesis, sorry, a PhD thesis, between Seth, uh, uh, Philippe, and myself, went to <clears throat> Madagascar and found Madagascar supplied this data to FAO. And within a few weeks, he had uh, 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 identified this as the actual catch. He, this was published, and uh, the World Bank hired him as an expert for, the, uh, for their work in Madagascar. And there we are. There we are. Um, <clears throat> the case of uh, Mozambique was that Mozambique sent to FAO only uh, the <clears throat> the industrial catch, and uh, they, they one time, they estimate the artisanal catch in uh, one province, and they uh, did not extrapolate to other provinces. But the difference was so big that they got scared and did not uh, send this, uh, this data again. And uh, the, the data that uh, Mozambique report to FAO uh, yielded uh, uh, food consumption of about eight kilograms per person per year in Mozambique. When, uh, when you take all the stuff that is eaten, the non-discard and the non-exported part, you get uh, uh, 18 kilograms per person per year in Mozambique, which is slightly above the average of 16 uh, kilograms per person per year in Africa. Uh, it is realistic. It was, it was nonsense before. And uh, my student uh, who went to, uh, to uh, Mozambique uh, found this in a week. Um, this could have been found in a week. Um, this is a little island in the Pacific. Um, they, uh, the British uh, supply the data. This was a British colony. And uh, this data are supplied to FAO. Uh, if, if this were true, the people in Wallis and Futuna would have starved because in the 50s, all they ate was coral reef fishes. And they had no imports and no exports. So they, from the consumption, from the number of people and uh, the, the, the consumption per person, uh, about 40 to 50 kilograms per person, we inferred this catch uh, that uh, has, had been there in addition to the catch that uh, was developed of industrial fisheries. So that's the real catch. Uh, in, uh, <clears throat> we did uh, for a foundation called Baltic 2020 a study of all the uh, Baltic states. We found that for Germany, for this part of Germany that is in the Baltic, the catches had 30% higher than reported landing, that uh, <clears throat> uh, the discards are uh, big, and that recreational catch of cod accounted uh, for 20% of cod catches. Uh, only one country in the world includes um, recreational catch in its official statistics. That is Finland. It's the only country in the world that does that. All other countries completely ignored, ignored the, the uh, recreational catch. And that includes the US, where the recreational catch uh, of the US uh, is millions of tons. So from the reconstruction we have done so far, we find that developed countries underestimate their catch by 30 to 50 percent. 
by not counting the small-scale catch, but not so much because of illegal catches. And develop, developing countries have uh, underestimated their catch uh, by 100% to 200, 500% because they do not consider, consider uh, small-scale catches and illegal catches. Now, uh, uh, but uh, we are going to be writing this up uh, next year. Now, about the question of no data, this is the source that we use for, for about uh, 150, uh, um, how to say, uh, reconstruction, and we use about 30 uh, sources by, by country. Um, uh, there is uh, historical studies, grey literature, we have household surveys, stock assessment report, media stories, and we work in local languages because we have local collaborators. For example, in, in Indonesia, we work with Indonesian and Indonesian literature. And these are all shadows of that, uh, that one doesn't look at, usually. And uh, about uh, 35 uh, sources by country. For China, we use 500 sources. Um, how about the Mediterranean? Well. We have uh, done all countries of the Med, including the Gaza Strip. Uh, for doing the Gaza Strip, you would think the Gaza Strip, what, what, what fishing do they do? Well, there were, there were extensive articles in the New York Times about uh, the Gaza Strip having a zone that shrinks and uh, expands depending on how the Israeli feel about it. And, uh, we contacted two universities, and there was one university with a, a young professor who was interested in working with us. So he did a, a reconstruction for the Gaza Strip, and we found that the Gaza Strip had much of the catch reported by Israel. So we contacted the Israelis, the Israeli did a reconstruction, and now the two papers are in press in uh, Acta Adriatica of uh, a time series of for the Gaza Strip and the time series of Israel, that is more or less correct. And we find that for the Med, about uh, they are two times higher than uh, landings, and I will show you four examples uh, uh, for the Med. Uh, so the Med we have covered here, uh, well, there is also the Gulf of Cadiz, but we pretend it's not there. We have uh, the Med, the Balears we have done separately, uh, we have done France, we have Corsica separately also, but I'm not presenting it. And we have Italy with the islands not uh, presented here. And Turkey, uh, but we can, Turkey we have uh, not, we cannot present, present uh, this blue zone as exclusive economic zone because we did do, if we do, uh, Turkey goes to war. Um, uh, it is a very touchy issue, the exclusive economic zones in Turkey. Um, so, uh, in Spain, we found that is the, the reported catch. We found that uh, um, the national, uh, the industrial, stat the industrial uh, uh, catch is uh, underreported, and the artisanal catch is underreported, and these are the various components. And uh, interestingly enough, uh, the reported catch from Spain and the reconstructed catch have the same trend. This, done was, this work was done by Marta Coll, who is now in France. Uh, the catch from the French coast is not published yet. Uh, it, it, uh, the industrial catch is uh, very well reported. Everything else is not. Um, and uh, we could look at uh, the IFREMER the database, uh, and it simply doesn't have these things, these additional things. And, uh, why not? Uh, the Italian mainland, uh, there are two, uh, two groups of uh, two entities, two, uh, say two, two agencies that produce uh, data for, uh, in Italy, and they are very different. Uh, and when one tries to find uh, which is the correct one, one ends up with this. And then uh, this additional catch is uh, 
simply not reported. Uh, I should mention that uh, reconstruction, uh, every step, every assumption, every every uh, inference, every yeah hypothesis uh, is documented explicitly. So you can retrace the reconstruction, and if you don't agree, you make another assumption, you end up with other other result. And uh, the Turkey has. Uh, uh, a catch also uh, that uh, that uh, really reflects only industrial, uh, and the big difference in Turkey between the official catch and industrial catch in the, is the Black Sea. There, there is a complete mess. But uh, for the for the uh, Mediterranean side, it's uh, kind of roughly okay. Uh, I'm almost done. If you don't, if you don't know, if you, if your agencies, if if your statistics system um, catch records only industrial fisheries, and then you don't know what small scale fisheries are, and you cannot relate them to each other. And uh, this is very different. What I'm saying here is very different from what you usually hear from fishery scientists, because fishery scientists work with, with one data set and then infer the status of the stock. What I'm saying is, uh, I'm talking about different fisheries, and uh, there is no way you can do a logical or reasonable inference on, on fisheries policies if you don't know one or the other sector. And uh, there is no way on the base of national statistics, which is the one that go to FAO, that you can manage the fisheries of the MED because there is the sport, the, the, the recreational sector, there is the subsistence sector, the catch that is taken by people to eat, and especially the artisanal sector, the petit métier, the, the people who catch fish from small boat but sell it, uh, it is not covered in statistics. And you cannot, if you look at the FAO data, you can apportion a part of the catch to artisanal fisheries. But this catch is actually industrial catch, because it's only the industrial catch that is covered. So it's going to be wrong. And another thing is that you, you don't know this about discarding if you have not quantified it. Uh, lots of studies uh, of discarding exist. For example, Kelleher uh, and uh, uh, the recent study is published by FAO. FAO, one cannot say FAO doesn't know about discarding, FAO does. But it is not connected to the catch. It's, there is the catch statistics, or the landing statistics, and there is the, the, the discarding statistics, or the discarding reports. But the two are not linked. So there is, it's very difficult to say what fishery has what discards and what will it cost them if, for example, the, the new fishery policy, uh, the new common fishery policy, which has uh, an abolition of discard as its goal, is to be implemented because we don't know how much discard this fishery is in it. And then the biggest point for me is that small-scale fisheries have been neglected uh, in Europe and in the world. Why have they been neglected? Because there is this, a vicious circle. You decide they are small, look at the name, small scale fisheries, so they must be small. So you don't need to look, and you don't need to cover them in, uh, in uh, statistics. So they are not entered in the statistics. So if you look, and they are not in the statistics, zeros, then they will be small. And so it becomes a, a, a circular vicious, uh, uh, un cercle vicieux, uh, and you cannot get out unless you reconstruct the catch, you rebuild the catch independently and examine the role of small scale fisheries. And uh, yeah, so that uh, you know what happens if you, if you if you promote a certain policy that will harm small-scale fisheries, you ought to know how much 
harm will be done because you know the size of that fishery. And finally, uh, that is going to be the story for next year. If, if what I told you is true, that uh, the, every developing country uh, has um, uh, half of the one third of the catch reported, and every developed country has about 30, 40% underestimation, and this seems to be the role, that the rule, then, uh, then uh, the maximum catch of the world will have been higher in, uh, in the 80s. Uh, for example, it could have been 120, 130 million tons. But it also means that it is now rapidly declining throughout the world. The world catch would be de rapidly declining. This would be contrary to the trend that FAO tells us, where the catch is more or less constant and, or perhaps slowly declining at 80 million tons. This would be a completely different um, figure. And it, the implications for policy are twofold, one positive and one negative. The negative one is obvious. If we don't do quickly something about fisheries, we are going to lose fisheries very rapidly because the decline is rapid. You could see that uh, for the reconstructed catch of many countries. The other conclusion is optimistic, which is that fisheries are actually more productive than we thought. And they could, if rehabilitated, they could produce more for people than they have to date. And, and the rebuilding of fisheries, we know it works. We know it works because, for example, in the US, and I'm not a US citizen and I don't but uh, it is a fact that they have legislation that is uh, very good and that forces politicians to rebuild stocks. It forces them to rebuild stock within 10 years. And they do it. And now they have most of their commercial stocks are on an upswing. This is going to be what they would want to do also in Europe, though they are still negotiating about when, how many years it's going it's going to be. The, the thing is, not only does it work to rebuild the stocks, but given our estimation, underestimation of the catch of the world, it is possible that we can rebuild them to higher levels than, than before anticipated, and that we would, on a long term, get more out of fishery in a sustainable way. So it is possible that we, if we manage fisheries well, we'll get more out of them than we think we could. But we have to rebuild them. And the, the, the fact that they are much higher than we thought, for example, the catch, that the catch is twice as much in the med than assumed before, that is a positive finding that we can benefit from. And I'm through. Thank you very much. Cool.